It's important for you to notify the other party in your case of the actions you're taking against them in court. To take legal action against someone and not inform them is fundamentally unfair. If you file for divorce or file a lawsuit against someone, you must notify them of what you have done in order for them to be able to respond and in order for your case to move forward in the court. The act of notifying the other parties that an action has begun and informing them of the steps they should take in order to respond is called service of process, and there are certain rules you need to follow in order to have someone served correctly. Before we get into the specifics of service of process, let's stop for a moment and look at what this term means. Process, legally, means the summons and petition in a domestic case, or summons and complaint in a civil case. When you make sure the other party has properly received a copy of the summons and petition or summons and complaint, you have had a service of process performed. Remember, you cannot serve the summons until you have first filed it with the court and it has been issued by the deputy clerk. The first thing you must do is make a copy of the summons and the petition or complaint. Next, you must find a process server, which is simply someone who will take the documents to the other party. You can have service of process performed for a fee if you contact the Sheriff's Department. Make sure to contact the Sheriff's Department for the county in which service will be performed. If you think the other party might be dangerous, it is recommended that you have service performed by law enforcement. You can also hire a private process server or have service performed by someone you know, as long as they are not part of the case and over the age of 18 years. Make sure this is someone who is unbiased and does not have an interest in the outcome of the case. Third, when serving the other party with the papers, the other party must be served personally, not through their attorney. Your process server has several options, though. The process server can deliver the documents to the other party at their work. If this party is not at work, the papers may be left with the party's secretary, manager, or bookkeeper. The process server can also deliver the documents to the other party at his home. If the other party isn't home, the papers may be left with a member of the party's family as long as that family member is at least 18 years of age. Lastly, after service is performed by your chosen process server, you need to make sure they fill out a form called a return of service or affidavit of service. This form must be signed in front of a notary unless the process server is a peace officer. The affidavit must clearly state who performed the service so that, if necessary, they can come to court and provide explanation in case there are any questions. The return of service is the proof that you will need in order to show the judge or magistrate you have served the required documents. Be sure the documents served are accurately listed by document name on your affidavit of service. For instance, the summons and complaint, or summons and petition for a new case, or if you are serving contempt papers, the verified motion, citation, and order. Your action, what it is you're trying to do in court, starts at the time the papers are served. Service of process is what you need to do first for your case to begin. Though it may seem easier not to perform a service of process, it's necessary for you to make sure that the other party is served. Failure to notify the other party or any dishonesty about whether or not they were actually served will hurt your standing and credibility with the court, and it could result in your case being dismissed. Service of process has several technical rules that must be followed but the information you need to follow those rules is available to you and by performing this responsibility you will keep your case moving through the court.